This is episode 41 with Jeff Woods. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, men of abundance? I am very excited today because I have the opportunity of introducing you to one of the men who has been in my earbuds for quite some time. And quite frankly, he has been a very big influence in men of abundance from the very beginning. And he didn't even know who I was. But I knew who he was because I was listening to his podcast, The Mentee. In our conversation today, Jeff gets into the story as to why he started The Mentee. And when I heard his story, it was an aha moment for me. Because there were people that I wanted to highlight. There were abundant men out there who I wanted to share their story. I wanted to talk about them. And instead of starting a podcast where I was talking all the time, Jeff Woods and his story that you're going to hear today gave me the courage to reach out to people like Jeff and to Jay Papazan, and to Randy Schramm, and to many of the other amazing men and women that you've heard from so far on Men of Abundance. And I assure you, there are many more amazing conversations coming your way. I've already got them scheduled or recorded. So make sure you subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher so that you do not miss one episode. It is getting better by the day. And I am really enjoying and getting so much out of these conversations, and I love sharing them with you. So, other than the mentee, who is Jeff Woods? Jeff Woods is the vice president of the One Thing team. After hearing the Jim Rohn quote that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, Jeff set out on a mission to surround himself with high-level CEOs and successful entrepreneurs. Fast forward just 10 months. And Jeff Wood went from employee to entrepreneur, launching a company with the co-authors of the best-selling book, The One Thing, Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. Jeff has been featured in Entrepreneur.com and is on a mission to teaching people how to live a life of focus so they can have more by doing less. Jeff, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. Thanks, Wallace. Man, I'm so excited for you to be here. And uh, I, I mentioned kind of in the intro to this and the bio that you are one of the guys that kind of put the bug in my head and gave me the idea to start building an audience so that I can get people like you to uh, come out and talk with me. (laughs) It's a good idea. (laughs) Well, hey, man, I mean, I I respect the heck out of you for taking action. Yeah, you know, everybody I've talked to so far, all the people that I've talked to, and of course, every book I've ever read, every course I've ever taken, none of that's worth anything until you take action on it. And that's part of what I'm doing with Men of Abundance is helping guys take action. There you go. So where are you at in the world? Where are you at today, Jeff? Today, I am in Austin, Texas. Great. So you're down the street from one of my old business partners and buddies, Mike Dillard. Oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Yep, I was uh, I was actually on the phone with Mike last week. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, we've done business together off and on for, goodness, for a very long time. Uh, we sat on the phone one time. I helped him when he first came out with his um, magnetic sponsoring. I sat on the phone with him with, with a team of people. As soon as we hung up, it was about a 45-minute call. As soon as we hung up, he sent me a message and said, congratulations, you just made $6,500. There you go. (laughs) I was like, whoa, that's crazy, man. But that just showed me from that point on the power of information. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, without a doubt. So I like to start off my show the way I start off most mornings. I like to make it every morning, but I'll be honest, most mornings I start off with an attitude of gratitude. And so what do you have to be grateful for today, Jeff? Oh, so much. And and it's something that I have been, gratitude has been a central practice of mine for a few years now. Right now, I'm grateful for a few things. The The health of my family overall, we, we had a health scare in the last month, which really checked me. And I'm just, I'm grateful for 
the health of everyone that I care about. And then I'm just grateful for the opportunities that are in my life right now. Seriously, I've, I, I am pinching myself at what has happened over the last few years. And I know you're up to speed with it, mm-hmm. but, um, just, just gr- gratitude does not even begin to cover it. Yeah. And we'll definitely be getting into that, what you're alluding to right there. Cause it is an amazing story. It completely got me pumped up and, and ready to do something similar. I just needed a venue in which to do it. in, and then I ran into uh, people like John Lee Dumas who said, Hey, you can start a podcast. And I was like, can I? So I took his free course and um, figured out how to make my audience uh, kind of similar to what you've done. Yep, exactly. So as far since we're talking about that, uh, I talked a little bit about you. I gave you a brief bio just before we got started here. But I would like to hear it from you. I'd like to hear a brief intro and, and kind of uh, talk about what we're talking about right now. Sure. So the Reader's Digest version of my story is I was in medical device sales for five years or so, which was an absolute blessing. I worked from home. I sold a device that saved lives, afforded a really nice lifestyle for my family, but I don't know about how many how many of your listeners, Wallace, have been in this situation where life's good, but they there's something that's missing. They they know there should be something more. But in my case, I've got this really nice set of golden handcuffs on. I didn't have a compelling reason to make a change. It, what ended up happening was a colleague of mine had a stroke when he was just 35 years old. At the time, my wife and I just had our first child. We just bought a house for the first time, I'm realizing if something happens to me where I can no longer work, that money, it dries up. Well, the next week, my company makes a change to mar- our commission structure, and overnight, my income gets slashed by 40%, which I don't know if you've, you, you've ever suffered a job loss or a devastating pay cut, but things got really ugly for us, and we almost ran out of money. It, it was at that moment that I heard that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, which have you heard that before? Or at least before, or before me. Yes, certainly. Right. That caused me to pause and say, who are my five? And are they where I want to be? Are they living the life I want to be living? The answer in, to that question was really no. And in fact, I've yet to meet anybody who says it's, it's a yes without actually having a, an active practice of upgrading their five. And so that's what I did. I sat out to upgrade my five. I, I did so very quickly. I started a podcast called The Mentee, where I've been the mentee and I've just been recording the private conversations with my mentors, some of which are extraordinarily high level, and documenting my journey from employee to entrepreneur. I had no idea that in the process of doing that, it would open an opportunity to make that transition in just 10 months uh, or to turn that podcast into a six-figure business, but that happened, and now I've got the opportunity to partner with Gary Keller, who started Keller Williams, the real estate company, and his co-author, Jay Papazan, they wrote a book called The One Thing, and now I'm running that company, and I'm literally sitting in Gary's conference room about 10 feet from his door as we speak. That is truly amazing, and to, and did you have, what were your contacts at that point with Gary Keller or anybody in that office? None other than that Jay Papzan got hired to speak at our national sales meeting for my medical device company. And you linked up with him? Well, basically what happens is I'm sitting in the back row of the entire room, like nowhere close to the front, but his message on stage when he's talking about the surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results is striking me dead in the heart. When he finished speaking, standing ovation across the room, and then I notice everybody is sitting down. Nobody's moving, and he's walking off stage. I'm going, gosh, I've got to be in a relationship with this guy. If, if not now, when? And so I sprinted down the side of the room and, and literally almost tackled the guy and said, hey, I, I've got to interview you. Come on, come on the Mentee podcast. And he said yes. And that was the, the initial contact, and I followed up a series of times with one simple question. What are you working on and how can I help you? Recognizing very clearly that I needed to add value. I needed to make deposits in the relationship bank account if there were to ever be a thriving relationship there. And one of the times he responded saying, Gary and I are looking for a CEO for a publishing company. I said, oh, I know some people who might be a fit. Let's talk. When he told me what they were looking for, he described me mm-hmm. and the rest is history. Absolutely. Wow. Wow you know it's it's all about timing and and just having the nerve to run up to somebody like Jay and just grab him by the arm and and have a conversation with him and then 
the biggest thing was provide value. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's interesting. I, so many people, when they think of networking or, or if they've ever attended a networking event, they show up looking to get something mm-hmm. and they wonder why they waste their time. When I started surrounding myself with the people who are where I wanted to be, I noticed that all those people, every time they walked into a room, they showed up looking to give. They never asked for anything. They just strategically always added value. And that really struck me, and I've, I've, I've carried it with me ever since. And it's, it's an abundant mindset, right? It fits right into everything that you're about. There is enough. And if you can provide first, you know, things come full circle. Yeah, absolutely. And, and abundant leaders, if you ever want to get into the position to where you want to connect with somebody like Jay or like Jeff or any of the other people that I've had on the show or somebody else that you just want to get in contact with, research them, find out what they're working on. Are they working on a book? They're working on a new project, contact them, but don't contact them and say, Hey, I want you, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to sit down with you. Even I want to have a cup of coffee with you. Figure out a way that you can add value to what it is that they're doing at that point in time. And they're going to at least consider it. On the other side, most people just say, Hey, you know, I'd like to talk with you. Can you give me some information? Can, or just straight out ask for information. And it's rarely going to come because they have, their time is limited as much as they'd love to help you. But at the same time, they're going to give their time to the people who are providing them value as well. That's right. So along the way, so you started your podcast, obviously, how long did you have your podcast, The Mentee, which is a great, it's a wonderful, um, podcast to listen to and I highly encourage all the abundant leaders to go over and listen to the mentee if you have not done so yet uh, because there's some very valuable uh, value bombs all over the place and Jeff is really bringing the goods with that without a doubt but did you have your how long did you have the mentee before you met had an opportunity to meet Jay I launched the mentee January 13th of 2015 and I kid you not I met Jay, it was either at the end of January or beginning of February. It was no more than a month. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> that's right that's at the truly, beginning. Yeah, that's truly fortunate. So who did you have on the show at that point by then that was a high influencer? You know, I had already developed relationships with certain people. I remember the night that I decided to launch the podcast. I was. It was the night before an event. Literally, I'm sitting outside around a pool having some cocktails with a bunch of guys and they looked at me and they said oh my god look at the people who are mentoring you this is incredible why don't you start a podcast and I thought okay that's interesting I literally walked into the event the next day and I approached the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation the guy who invented email uh, I mean some some really some guys who, have, who had accomplished some extraordinary things in their life and just said hey I'm launching a podcast and I must feature you and they all said okay <laughs> so it was those guys a mentor of mine was the CEO of the largest sports agency in the world at the time they filmed the movie Jerry Maguire based on the agency that he ran um, another mentor of mine was Tony Robbins executive vice president he literally helped build Tony's company so some 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 good guys for sure Absolutely. And I remember that episode with the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Well, I remember all of those that you mentioned, actually, because you got many of those on the, sh- on the show. But that was an amazing story with the Ma- Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm not going to give it away. I thought it was some great trivia in there, uh, some hmm. stuff that he revealed uh, on how that all got started. But uh, Men of Abundance, you definitely got to go listen to that episode. Yeah, I think it was like episode seven. It's at the very mm-hmm. beginning. Yeah, very, very good episode. So along the way... Um, I'm sure everything didn't just go perfectly as planned, even though within the first month you had some definitely some great influencers and amazing people to talk to. What were the kick in the gut moments along the way? Where do we start? Um, I think that's been the biggest thing. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Um, you know, I feel like entrepreneurship is very sexy these days. It's very trendy to say I'm an entrepreneur. But I think the reality is most people are not meant to be a number one. Maybe they'd be a great number two or number three. But today, for some reason, I think people feel like they have to be number one. Um, I, I have come to find that I do thrive in that capacity. But when you truly wear the crown or the crown, you also feel the weight that comes with it. I remember, I think it was episode 50 was the first time that I introduced my wife, Amy, to my audience. And I literally, you hear me ask her how me launching a business while holding down a day job has taken a toll on our marriage. 
and you'll hear her say, I can count the number of times that I have fallen asleep next to you or woken up next to you collectively in the last year on two hands. You know, the, 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 the parts of starting and scaling a business that people don't see, those sacrifices that you often have to make. And, and, and really, like you talk about, how do you still live abundantly so that you don't have to make too many sacrifices so that you can have everything you could possibly want? That's been a major journey for me. Yeah, that definitely is. And I do remember that episode. And uh, I took heed to that, as a matter of fact. Uh, in fact, I'm making changes with my podcast and my workload uh, this week uh, because of uh, what some other mentors have shared with me and just where I'm at in my life. So that's some definitely I get that that kick in the gut where you're just not spending the time with your family and you're you know missing stuff along the way. And if everybody gets it and everybody understands and everybody's got buy in, then it's not as much of an issue as it is in some relationships. It's just not that way. Uh, there's a lot more resentment and a lot of other emotions coming along with that so i appreciate you sharing that with us and abundant leaders one thing i want to point out too is this doesn't always pertain to uh entrepreneurs it also pertains to individuals who have take on a new role at a a new supervisor role at a job or something like that that's going to take up much more time Uh, you have to consider that as well Mm mm-hmm so what was the enough is enough moment? What changed? What Did you make a pivot point at that at that point when you guys had made that realization? You know, it, there were, again, with with each <laughs> each low that I, I experienced of the entrepreneurial roller coaster, there was always a mentor there with a, with a very large two by four to just smack me and wake me up and make me realize that I'm accountable for everything. That That really is the crux of it, though. It's a level of accountability. When my marriage was strained, it was my fault. When things weren't going well in the business, it was my fault. When customers weren't satisfied, it was my fault. When I felt like I was falling apart because I wasn't getting enough sleep, it was my fault. Ultimately, you're accountable for everything that happens in your life, whether you feel like it's directly within your control or not. Because the way you perceive things that come at you has a lot to do with it. It was at the moment when I'm realizing, okay, my company slash my income by 40%. That's my fault. It's my fault that I allowed myself to be in a position where we only had one stream of income. You know, the company did what the company had to do for themselves. They're a publicly traded company. They had to make the choice that was best for the company. It's my fault that I didn't start building passive income streams sooner so that I would be insulated from it. That's just an example. That's very abundant thinking. And that's one thing that I point out on the show quite often. And I know abundant leaders may be tired of hearing it, but this is just another perfect example of it. Even though you're comfortable in your job, you love what you're doing, whatever it is, I feel personally, you must have some sort of a side hustle, whether it's real estate investments Rather, it's a very good investment that you can pull off of on a monthly basis because most of your investments, you're not doing that. It's for a long term. Some sort of side business, something you've got that's going to be eventually bringing in some income so that if or when something like that happens, like what happened to Jeff, but he took responsibility for it, then he had something to fall back on. And it's just paramount. What are your thoughts on that, Jeff? Well, 100%. I mean, it first started when my colleague had a stroke. And I'm going, okay, if that happened to me and I couldn't work, my family is screwed. And that would have been my fault that I only allowed our single source of income to be active income, that I had to show up to work to get that stream. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're just, I forget who shared this with me, but it's they said the average millionaire has seven different streams of income. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at the people that I surround myself with that have uh, over a net worth of a million dollars it's not from one it's not from one source never yeah absolutely in fact i'm listening right now again to um uh, tony robbins book money Mm. master the game yep and just this morning the part i was listening to was exactly that and jeff is not talking about those millionaires like those pop stars mike tyson's these sports figures all those folks out there who have a million dollars coming in from one source and then end up filing bankruptcy because they have one source of income. Tony mentions in there as much as he likes Mayweather, he fights, makes money, spends money. Fights, Mm -hmm. makes money, spends money. And most people out there, most of you men out there are doing the same thing. You're working, 
you're making money and you're spending your money. And you're not in this part part of the book he's talking about saving and it's saving in the form of investing. So you have to have some sort of additional income or at least learn how to manage what money you're making at this point. And I would say do that first because if you can't manage $80,000 a year, you're certainly not going to be able to manage two hundred fifty, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year. Correct. Out of all the mentors that you've had a chance to talk with, which one had the most profound impact on your life, either entrepreneurial or personal? You know, that's not a fair question because a mentor shows up at a particular time that you need their guidance. When I was early on, uh, Dave Meltzer, who was the sports agent guy, was one of the primary mentors. He and I sat down every two weeks, and he was a major, major factor in me uh, developing an abundant mindset and, and getting me from employee to entrepreneur. And then you fast forward to today, where I'm working closely with Jay Papasan and Gary Keller. I mean, they are the biggest influences from a mentor standpoint in my life right now. And I'm, I'm taking off like a freaking rocket ship as a result. So it just, it constantly changes. That's a very good point. Absolutely. And you certainly can outgrow and you should outgrow your mentors at certain, based on what you said on certain points in your life and where you're at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and this is another thing that we talk about quite a bit on men of abundance is between the difference between mentors and coaches. What What is your take on that? Uh, I think a mentor is someone who is there to guide you along a journey. I view a coach more as someone who is there for accountability purposes and almost more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Specific guidance, a more surgical approach. I don't think it has anything to do with an exchange of money. That's very interesting. Yeah, like it, that's. And what do you mean by that specifically? By you, you don't think it has anything to do with an exchange of money? I don't think uh, you can pay a mentor and you can pay a coach. A coach can also be a free, and a mentor can also be free. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, I've heard. I the don't opposite. think it. I've heard the difference yeah, from that. Yes, but I, that's it, the reality. The reality is, a coach is there to hold you accountable. A mentor is somebody who is already exemplifying a specific area of your life that you aspire to have and is able to guide you there. Okay. Yeah, because I've heard people say that. I'm glad you made that that point because I've heard people say the difference between a mentor and a coach is one gets paid, one doesn't, meaning a coach would normally get paid, a mentor would not, but I've I've paid mentors. Yeah, I think that's bullshit. So oh, you think that it's BS that the – um. Either one could get paid or not the, not the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why not? Yeah, agreed. Absolutely. I'm just getting clarification on that. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. I totally agree. I paid a mentor uh, five grand. A mentor, actually, ultimately eight grand to mentor me for a year in lease options. You know, it was a great relationship and still a great relationship. There you go. You're at a pivot point right now with uh, the mentee. Oh, uh, God, yes. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> How's that going? This, uh, amazing. So this is where the power of surrounding yourself with the right people comes into play. I'm in my, I'm, I'm in medical device sales. I launched the mentee. The podcast really takes up is it takes off. It's in the top 20% of all podcasts. And I ultimately scale it to the point where there's a six figure business on the back end. As a result of having success there, that made me a qualified candidate to move to Austin, have the opportunity to partner with Gary and Jay with the one thing. So here I am becoming the face and running the business of the one thing but I have two things. I can't be the face of the one thing and be an integ- with integrity and also have two things. This is where, at least in my limited mindset at the time, I said, all right, well, I'm going to have to shut down the mentee. But I really didn't want to do that because mm-hmm. this is my baby. It's making a massive impact and, and it's profitable. That's when Jay sits down with me and, and he says, no, 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 no. You got to think a bigger game. What if everything that you had done up until this point, all hundred plus episodes of them, were quote unquote season one of The Mentee, where it was about you documenting your journey from employee to entrepreneur. Congratulations, you've done it. Now what if in season two, you went from being the mentee to being one of the primary mentors and you recruited somebody out of your audience to document their journey inside your world? In that moment, my mind expanded. See, Gary Keller 
is a true master of systems. He talks, and we, he, we met yesterday, and he, he talks about how he always looks out in the world and tries to identify a model. Then he builds around a system around that model and eventually steps out of the system and allows somebody else to run it and create a bigger opportunity for themselves. That's exactly what happened with Keller Williams. It started as this little real estate company in Austin, Texas. He built a model. He built a system. He scaled it to the largest in Texas. And then he was able to step out and have somebody else step in as CEO and make a bigger opportunity for themselves. You fast forward, you know, five CEOs have been able to come in now, scaling it exponentially each time. It's the largest real estate company in the world. And Gary has just been on the board for most of it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just taking a page out of his playbook and applying it to the mentee. And I like the whole aspect there of you had to make a change in your business, in this case, in your podcast, in your business, in order to grow yourself, but also to take the mentee to a whole different level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I've been following you on the progress that you've been um, looking for the new mentee. How's that progress coming along? It's gone amazing. I just, I literally shared this with the audience and, and opened it up and said, hey, if you're interested in being the next mentee, go to menteepodcast.com slash the next mentee. And we've had close to 55 people apply. Nice. So so now my operations manager is going through and vetting it and, and narrowing down the finalists. And, and we're going to have all those people record episodes and we'll release them out to, to the mentee fans and they'll get to vote on who the next mentee is. Perfect. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So I know along the way with the mentee, you have multiple messages and emails, and I've seen many of your reviews. Tell us a good news story that's come out of uh, the mentee for other people. I mean, there's hundreds of people that that I'm getting. I'm getting literally success stories every week, several times a week. So um, is there a particular one that you're thinking of? No, not at all. Just in general. Yeah, just in general. I can't narrow any specific one down. I mean, one comes to my mind. Her name's Michelle, and she's she's an insurance broker, and she's really been struggling. She's been working with her dad for so long, um, but really needed guidance outside of just the little silo that she's been in. And it it forced her to make some investments in her education that she probably wouldn't have done otherwise. And as a result of that, she surrounded herself with new people and found other mentors and and completely been able to look at the business in a different way, recruit in some exceptional talent that's able to actually scale the business for them. So I see stuff like this all the time. The reality is every single one of you every day has a choice. You have certain goals that you want to accomplish and you can accomplish them the easy way or you can accomplish them the hard way. When I phrase it like that, you're going, of course, I want to do the easy way. What you don't realize is on an unconscious level, you're taking the hard way every day. That's because you you set a goal, you think of a way to accomplish it, and you take action. But what you're really doing is you're guessing. You're guessing what that next step should be. And you end up wasting a lot of time, making a lot of mistakes, and even in certain cases, wasting a lot of money because you just didn't have the experience or the perspective to do it as fast as you could have. The easy way is to say, all right, if this is my goal, who's done it before? How can I get into relationship with them to the point where they will turn around and grab my hand and help pull me forward at an accelerated path? That was literally my story. I tried to start a business on my own. I lost even more money when I could not afford to lose more money. And then I said, okay, easy way, hard way, let's go easy way. And the moment I started focusing on just surrounding myself with the right people first, boom, employed entrepreneur in 10 months. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And I have exactly the same experience. So, Jeff, you've dropped us with so much information. What we're going to do right now is we're going to pay it forward to men of abundance. You ready for that? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Abundant Leaders, I want to help you connect with your customers, your clients, and help you get your message out to the world. You can reach and connect with your ideal customer by being a guest on multiple podcasts that are specific to your niche. Now, I know many of you have amazing stories, amazing products, services, whatever it may be, but some of you either don't want to sell, you don't want to come off as a salesperson, or you simply don't know how to reach those people that are looking for what you have to offer. 
All you have to do is tell your story. But where do you tell your story? On a podcast. And I'm going to connect you with a team of people who are going to help you do just that. They're going to find podcasts that fit your specific niche. They will coach you on what to do before the podcast, during the podcast, and after the podcast. They're even going to set up the show art, and they're going to send it out on social media on your behalf. They're going to take care of everything for you. And you're going to get exposure to hundreds of thousands of people in your niche looking for you. The name of the team I'm going to connect you with is Tom Schwab over at Interview Valet. Go to the show notes of this show, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says resources, and you're going to see Interview Valet. Click on that link and see what Tom has to offer for you so that you can finally get your message out to the right people and stop wasting time and money. Now, I was already very impressed with Interview Valet because they have sent me guests and I have been sharing their links, so they have graciously asked me to be an affiliate with Interview Valet. What that does for Men of Abundance is that keeps the mic on. So when you use their service, we keep the mic on. If you're finally ready to connect with your perfect customer, go to menofabundance.com and either click on the show notes of this show or go to the resources page and click on that link in Interview Valet. Now let's get back to the show. So let's uh, give Men of Abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. The first is recognizing that you, whether you realize it or not, just made the most valuable investment you could ever make. You hear all the time people say, oh, save your money so you can invest it and your money can make money. That's great. But that's not even the most valuable investment you can make which is the investment of your time. And unlike money where a return is never guaranteed, you can guarantee yourself a return on your investment of your time by taking action. So I would compel you, what's one thing that really stood out to you during Wallace's and my conversation? What's one thing that you can actually take action on? And will you do it? Because if you do, that's when you guarantee yourself the return on the investment. Beautiful. What daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life? Planning. The moment that I moved to Austin and surrounded myself with Gary and Jay, not only am I reading the one thing, and when I mean like reading, I mean really digesting it and living it. I'm constantly asking the question, If I can only do one thing today, just one, like literally you have a gun to my head, I can only do one thing today. What is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary? And I make sure that I'm taking action on that highest leverage action every single day. The reality is, People open up their calendars, they see all the stuff that's on there, and they just follow their schedule like sheep, blindly. Whatever happens to be on the calendar, they just do. They never take a step back and say, where am I going, and what is the highest leverage activity that I could possibly do today? And I'm going to do that. I don't care if I have that meeting scheduled, I'm going to push. I don't care if I have that call scheduled, it's not my one thing, I'm going to push. That's the surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results that permeates the culture of Keller Williams. And it's something that I've been blessed to to start to live now and now get to teach. What a wonderful thing. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What book would you recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, I will say the one thing just because it changed my life. I was was a super fan long before uh, it became my business. So I really do believe that that is a must read for everybody. Outside of that, I'll throw another one out there. Cash Flow Quadrant. Mm. Many people have heard of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's not his best book. Mm -mm. The best one is Cash Flow Quadrant where he really breaks down what are the four quadrants that you could possibly earn income from? The employee, the self-employed, the business owner, or the investor. And why do you want to be in two very specific quadrants? It was that book that made me wake up and realize, oh crap, I'm in the employee quadrant. I'm paying the highest taxes. I have the least amount of control. I have the least amount of security. And that's where I heard the Jim Rohn quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Excellent. That book, 
cash flow quadrant is basically what we've been talking about during this entire show. And the one thing is the book that won got me to actually launch this podcast because it kept me on track on what was most important and focusing on the task that I had to get done next to get this podcast launched. And it's what keeps me on track with this podcast and not veering off into too many other different projects. In fact, I'm staying on this project until it catches hold. I'm not going to talk too much more about that because I am going to be talking with Jay Papazan next week. He's going to be on the show And I'm very excited about having that conversation with him specifically. Uh, Jeff, I knew that you had been working with Gary and Jay, of course, but I didn't know the level of your involvement with and what you're doing now with the one thing. So that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I asked Jay about this and he said, Gary's one thing is being chairman of Keller Williams. The one thing he needs to do every single day is advance the mission of Keller Williams and help the agents be more successful. My one thing is writing books. Jay wants nothing more than to be able to just write books all day long. And they needed somebody who could wake up every single day and their one thing would be turning the one thing into a productivity empire. And that's my opportunity now. Men of Abundance, Abundant Leaders, if you do not have either of those books, make sure you get a hold of it. I will have them listed in the show notes that will be at menofabundance.com forward slash zero four one. Jeff, I have one more question for you, and it's one of my favorite questions to ask, and I've been waiting at the, on the edge of my seat to ask you this question because I can't wait to hear the answer, and that is, what does living a life of abundance mean to you? Hmm. I, I, I say this as I look at my wrist, and I have a, a, a bracelet on that has a coin, and it has one word that's engraved into it, and it says abundant. You didn't know that before we started recording. Not. That's amazing. Abundance to me recognize it means that every day recognizing that the world and the opportunities are not finite. There is not just one piece of pie and you and I do not have to go out and fight for our fair share. It's about recognizing that if you and I can sit down with a genuine curiosity about each other with a genuine level of empathy and and really sincerely wanting to enrich each other's lives, we have the power to infinitely expand that pie and have as much as we could possibly ever want inside this world together. Beautiful. I did not know that you had that bracelet. Oh, this is abundant. That's amazing. I know you're freaking excited right now. I, I'm totally I'm just <laughs> grinning ear to ear, man. It's just beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. So, Jeff, you've obviously left us with a bunch of information. I truly appreciate your time. But I'd like for you to leave us with a parting piece of guidance and any way that we can get a hold of you or keep an eye out for anything that you have coming up. Sure, sure. So, Menti Podcast is the podcast right now. I literally have been pressing record and documenting the private conversations with my mentors while I've gone on this entire journey. And I really did that because I'm rolling with some really interesting people and I wanted to be abundant and share the guidance that I was getting with anybody who would be interested. And as a result, that's why you see the testimonials and and the impact that it's made. Um, The one thing.com that's with the number one thing.com. We have tremendous resources and trainings there it's just it's an amazing place and uh yeah both of those places you can find me there excellent jeff i truly appreciate your time i've been anticipating this call and uh, one last thing i want to leave with you abundant leaders is be bold you will be amazed at the men and women who will say yes to Mm -hmm. you as long as you're providing some sort of value and going to allow them to share their story with other people because abundant leaders love to help other people. That's why they're abundant. It doesn't come the other way around. They're abundant mindset first and abundance comes to them afterwards. So I truly appreciate your time, Jeff, and I look forward to finding out who the new mentee is and seeing everything else you have coming up. I appreciate it, Wallace. All right, brother. Take care. Thanks. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance. Abundance.